Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're going to be seeing how we can actually add SQL Server to our .NET Web API. We're going to be seeing how we can actually move from Postgres to SQL Server and we're going to be seeing how we can actually run SQL Server on our machine in a container way as well as connecting our API to it. So let's get started. So what I have here is I have my web API and this is the web API that I have been working on for a while now. If you want to uh, follow up, I will link the video down in the description down below. But basically this is a very simple controller web API where we actually have controllers. As we can see here, we have two main controllers where we're actually able to add a driver and the achievements. We have my program.cs where I'm connecting directly to my Postgres. And basically I have two class libraries, one called data service where I'm actually implementing a unit, unit of work package where I have here all of the repositories. I have basically my data where I contain my application DB contacts and within this I'm basically able to create a code first approach to manage my database and I have another class library which is called entities which inside of it it will contain the different DB sets that it needs for the tables so we can see the achievement table you can see here the drivers table as well I have some DTOs available for me to utilize so this is a very simple web API so what I want to do right now is actually migrate this from Postgres to actually utilize SQL Server and once I have done that I'm going to be connecting it to SQL Server utilizing a SQL Server hosted within Docker and then through that I'll be able to utilize SQL Server with my application. This is not going to be covering data migration. This is only covering how to switch the database technologies of our API. If you're interested in data migration, please let me know and I'll make sure to have a specific video to cover that. So the first thing that I want to do here is I want to actually get my connection string set up. So because I have my connection string here, so we can see here this is my Postgres connection string. What I want to do is I'm going to be creating a new connection string. I'm going to call it SQL Server Connection and through this one here I will be able able to create my connection string and to make it easy for myself I'm gonna hard code my connection string here but in real case scenario should not do that so to do this first of all we need to add the server it's gonna be localhost and it's gonna utilize port 1433 then I'm gonna have my initial catalog which is gonna be my database name I'm just gonna call it one uh, db1 I can call it whatever I want and once I have that now I need to specify the username and password that I'm gonna be utilizing to connect to it so the user ID is gonna be sa again for simplicity sake, I'm using SA, but in real case scenario, you need to utilize something else. And now I need to specify my password. I'm gonna say equal say YouTube 2021. And lastly, I need to specify that this is gonna require trust the certificates that the server uses. So I'm gonna put trust server certificate equal true. Perfect. So trust here is wrong. Let me fix it. Perfect. Trust server certificate equal true. So once I have done this, now I can actually go back to my program.cs. And inside my program.cs, I want to do is I want to switch from this server, uh, from simple DB to my SQL Server connection. And what I want to do is basically I want to utilize only SQL Server. So I'm going to remove this. And what I wanted, what I need to do here is I need to install a package to utilize SQL Server. And to do this, I'm going to open my terminal and I'm going to navigate to my Formula One data service. And then here I need to install the package that I'm going to be utilizing, which is going to be .NET add package, which is going to be Microsoft .entity framework core.sql server and now that has been installed successfully what i can do here is instead of use the postgres one i'm gonna say dot use sql server and that basically allows me to utilize my sql server instead of my postgres so once i have done this the next step for me is inside my data service class what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna delete the migration folders because this migration currently belong to postgres so i'm just gonna delete them and i'm gonna open again my terminal i'm gonna clear this up and i'm gonna create migration scripts so in order to do that i'm gonna put dot nut we have migrations add and i'm gonna call these initial migration and through this I'm just gonna specify the startup project and once it runs now we can see build succeeded and I have my migration set so now if I click on here you'll be able to see that I have my migration folders available and if I open this we can see that it's actually creating all of the migration files to create my database and my tables inside SQL Server. Perfect. So once I have done this, the next step is to create this for me. So what I want to do right now is I want to make sure that I have SQL Server available on my machine. And to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Docker Compose file. And within this Docker Compose file, I'm going to configure SQL Server in order for me to have the credentials for it. And then it will allow me to connect to it. So now what I want to do is I want to add a Docker Compose file. I'm going to add it through the terminal. So I'm going to put dot docker-compose.yaml and touch me here, create a new file. And once I have done that, 
as you can see here I have a docker compose so now that my docker the compose file has been created now I need to populate it and to do that what I need to do is I need to specify the version that I'm going to be utilizing of this file and for this I'm going to be utilizing version 3.8 once I have done that now what I want to do is I want to specify the services that I'm going to be utilizing and these services are going to be my SQL server so to do this I'm going to put services and now I'm going to specify the service name that I want to utilize and it's going to be MS SQL server and once I have done that now I need to specify the configuration for this service so I need to specify the base image that I'm going to be utilizing in order for me to utilize this server so I'm going to specify image and I'm just going to copy the image name here rather than me typing it one by one and again you can find this docker image from Ubuntu uh, from uh, docker hub and as you can see here I'm utilizing SQL server 2017 uh, based on Ubuntu and now once I have this defined this I need to specify the environment that I'm going to be utilizing and within this environment I'm going to specify I'm going to pass all of the different configuration for SQL server to be able to run on my machine and for this I need to provide the following first I need to provide the accept EULA which is going to be the license agreement I'm going to say yes I accept it then I'm going to specify the SA password and this SA password it has to match whatever I specified in my app settings here so it needs to be YouTube 2021 so let's add it here perfect and now what I need to do specify what type of flavor or what types of version I want it does for my SQL server so I need to add MSSQL underscore PID and this is going to be SQL Server Express once I've done all of this now I need to specify the ports and the ports basically for SQL Server it's going to be 1433 from the outside connecting to 1433 uh, inside my container and I need to add here my quotations and that should be it so now what I have here is I have my docker compose file and within this docker compose file I have configured SQL server to utilize through docker so now once I have done this I'm gonna clear this up and what I want to do here is I'm just gonna run my docker compose so I'm gonna put docker dash compose I'm gonna put up and that's it now I'm gonna run it and we can see here that docker compose is already running and I have SQL server up and running on my machine okay perfect so now that I have done that what I want to do right now is I'm gonna be creating the or basically I'm gonna be processing the migrations that I have just created here so to do this I'm gonna navigate back to my formula one data service and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put .NET EF database update and then I'm gonna specify here the startup project and the startup project is going to be my formula one api so now this is running you can see i have a problem here let's check what is the problem let's check the connection string oops i think this is there okay let's try this again so now we can see it has executed successfully and now if i go back to my database management and let me refresh this one here gonna put refresh and if i open this up under database we can see i have my f1 app db if i open this up schemas let me make this a bit bigger and i open my dbo we can see under tables i have my achievements i have my driver and if i open them up now they should be empty so i put view data and we can see i don't have any drivers there perfect so this means right now that my configuration is actually my configuration is actually running and my sql server is actually running great so now what i want to do is just want to test this out so i'm just going to run my application so now if i click on run we can see my application is running so if i open up in my web browser as you can see my application is running so if i try to post a driver let's zoom in a bit try it out i'm gonna add my name so i say muhammad i'm gonna say last name lawand favorite number is 23 i'm just gonna put my date of birth as a year 2000 and i'm gonna click on execute and we got a 201 so now if i go back to my database server and i refresh here we should be able to see that i have muhammad available okay perfect we can see it has just been created if i go back to my web browser again let me add another driver here i said lewis say hamilton 44 and execute again check the database we can see i'm able to see it here okay perfect and now if i go back here i get all of the drivers we should be able to see that i have two drivers available for me and we can see them here available okay great so if you want to do a quick summary on what we have done here is first of all i needed to update my program.cs in order for me to update my connection string in order for me to utilize sql server so that's the line here and then i have installed a package inside my data service to tell my application that i'm going to be utilizing sql server once i have done that inside my program.cs i basically updated my connection string to utilize sql server because i'm utilizing entity framework and db contacts it automatically can recognize this and create my necessary code to connect to it and then what i did here is I added the migration that's needed in order for my tables to actually be converted into a SQL Server code. And then once I have done that, I have created a Docker Compose file. And through this Docker Compose file, I have configured SQL Server to run locally on my machine utilizing Docker. 
and now I have this actually running on my local machine. Once I have done this, I was actually able to connect to my SQL server through Docker in order for me to have my application running. And once we have done that, I was actually able to run my application and actually add drivers and retrieve them. So this was a quick introduction about SQL Server, Docker Compose with SQL Server and how we can actually utilize it. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like, share and subscribe. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.